their chief of police, Jeff Bryan. This is the uh, chief of Plano Police Department, um, Ed Drain, and the Dallas FBI special agent in charge, Matthew Bissarno, in the middle. So we'll open it up with uh, Garland Chief of Police, Jeff Bryan. Uh, good afternoon. Like you said, my name is Jeff Ryan. I'm the police chief for the Garland Police Department, and uh, we have invited you here today to give you an update on two incidents which occurred yesterday in Garland and in Plano. Uh, some of this information may be repetitive, uh, but I'm going to try to start from the beginning. So yesterday before noon, the Garland Police Department respond responded to a call in the 400 block of Forest Gate Drive involving a gunshot wound. Upon arrivals, officers located a victim who was deceased and who we have identified as 26-year-old Isabella Lewis out of Garland. During our initial investigation, we discovered that the victim's car was missing. Now, we quickly put out a bulletin to surrounding law enforcement agencies, notifying them about the incident and asking them to be on the lookout for the vehicle. We also determined through the help of the family that our victim was a Lyft driver and that she had been uh, she had recently picked up a rider and the name of that rider who was on her notification to be picked up was Imran Ali Rashid. A short time later we were notified by the Plano Police Department that the victim's vehicle was found in the Plano PD parking lot and that someone had just entered the Plano Police Station and started shooting at the officers. The suspect's name in the Plano incident is the same name as, as the person who was scheduled to be picked up by our victim in Garland, which is Imran Ali Rashid. This information, along with additional forensics evidence, was leading us to issue a capital murder warrant for Rashid uh, but during preparations, we were notified that he had passed away from his injuries. As law enforcement, part of our investigation now is to try to determine a motive. Through our search for clues, we discovered a note that was left in the victim's car that appears to give us some type of notive, a motive uh, for both of these shootings and also a motive that prompted us to solicit help from the FBI, which we'll speak here shortly. Uh, before I hand this over to Police Chief Drain, I would like to ask that you please keep Isabella's families in your thoughts and your prayers as they deal with this loss. As a police department and as a city, we're going to do whatever we can to support this family. And I'll turn it over to Chief Drain. Thank you, Chief. Uh, my name is Ed Drain, and I'm the Chief of the Plano Police Department. And I also want to just give you a, an update uh, from yesterday's events. Uh, at about 12, uh, 20 hours uh, yesterday, a subject walked into the lobby of the Plano Police Department's uh, headquarters building at 909 14th Street and went up to a civilian employee and said that someone was acting strangely in the parking lot. This subject who walked into our lobby we now know is Rashid. Uh, Rashid walked out of our lobby and our employee contacted our communications dispatch to have officers meet uh, what, and, 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 just, and handle whatever problem was going on out in the parking lot. Before the responding officers could arrive, Rashid walked back into the police department, uh, this time with a gun in his right hand, a semi-automatic pistol. Uh, when he returned back to the lobby, there was a civilian employee who was in the lobby along with a visitor who was in the lobby to be fingerprinted. Uh, the <clears throat> civilian employee attempted to uh, de-escalate the situation and uh, talk to Rashid. Uh, they had a brief conversation and then Rashid raised his pistol and shot at her in the direction of our civilian employee. At that time, both the civilian employee and the visitor in the lobby were able to make their way to a secure area of the building. Officers inside of the building heard those shots being fired and uh, they made their way to the lobby. Uh, one officer was in what we call our record section. That's actually bullet resistant glass. And uh, so he made a decision to attempt to uh, shoot through that glass because that would have been quicker than him retreating back into the building and having to go in the hallway and come back through a door. Another employee, another uh, officer came through a, uh, from a side door and was able to engage Rashid. Uh, he fired uh, uh, three rounds. All of the, his rounds struck Rashid. Uh, Rashid fired at least one round at him, and he also pointed the weapon at the civilian employee. So we have one count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, a felony two, 
and we have uh, two counts of uh, aggravated assault against a public servant. Those are felony ones. Of course, we will not be filing those charges. Rasheed passed away at about 2.26 p.m. in a local hospital. Uh, so uh, we do have good video footage of these offenses, both from our facility and from body camera. Uh, but uh, uh, the fact that our officers shot at Rasheed, we still have another investigation, an officer-involved shooting to do, and we're doing that investigation in conjunction with the Collin County District Attorney's Office. That's all I have. Thank you, Chief. Brian, Chief Drain. So uh, as mentioned earlier, my name is Matthew DeSarno. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of FBI Dallas. First, uh, from my office and from our, my partners, as mentioned earlier, our condolences and prayers go out to Isabella, her family, her friends, and loved ones. They're suffering right now, and I can assure you the full resources of the FBI are working in close co collaboration with our partners to, to get justice for Isabella. I'd like to remind all you in attendance today that we're still very early in this investigation, and we won't have all the answers today. It's likely I will not be able to answer uh, many of the questions that, that you all have, but I'll, we will do our best, and as, and as more information comes out, we will um, look, to, look to inform the public. The Dallas FBI's Joint, Chair Joint Terrorism Task Force has joined the investigations of the shooting that occurred at the Plano Police Department, as you just heard, and the murder that occurred in Garland on Sunday. We're working with our law enforcement partners to determine what led to the incidents and if they were an act of terrorism. This remains an open investigation, and as I said, as more information becomes available, some of that may be released as it is verified. At this point, we do not believe that the suspect, Imran Ali Rashid, was provided assistance by others or that others were involved in these incidents. However, that's a top investigative priority for us to determine the extent of his relationships and contacts. This remains an active investigation, and the FBI remains vigilant in our efforts to detect and assess possible threats if they arise. We encourage the public to remain vigilant and promptly report suspicious activities that could represent a threat to public safety. If anyone has relevant information about Imran Ali Rashid or his involvement in this incident, please report it to tips.fbi.gov or call 1-800-CALL-FBI. At this point, uh, we are open to take questions, and I'll turn it back over to Chief Ryan to... Uh, to uh, Chief, can you speak to um, anything you can tell us about this letter or motive that you have found? And can you tell us whether or not these two people knew each other prior to what happened yesterday? So I'll, I'll tell you that there is no indication at all that they knew each other. Uh, um, they did not know each other from everything we've seen. As far as the letter, we've turned that over to the FBI, and I'll let them speak on the letter. Okay. So, so as Chief Bryant said, you know, early on in the investigation, uh, they found a letter that didn't, that that. Um, made them make a decision to bring us into the investigation. The early portion of this investigation, we still have a long way to go here, has revealed that Rashid may have been inspired by a foreign terrorist organization to commit these acts. Uh, and that's, that's really as much as specific as I can get about that. But bottom line is we believe he may have been inspired by a foreign terrorist organization to commit these crimes. Was he already on the FBI's radar at all? So it's a good question, thanks. Uh, the F the Rashid was the subject of a Dallas FBI counterterrorism investigation from 2010 to 2013. Over the course of three years, uh, the investigation, all investigative steps were taken. That investigation has been reviewed. Uh, I'm comfortable that the investigation was done thoroughly and properly. And in 2013, uh, after the exhaustion of all investigative steps, that investigation was closed. When the eight, when the case team determined that um, that Rashid at that time did not pose a threat, so can you kind of get into the specifics of that invest investigation, being that it's now closed? So I can't discuss specific actions taken during the investigation, but I can tell you that again, that investigation has been thoroughly reviewed. Uh, we've looked at at the investigative steps taken, and looked at the way that the investigation was was opened and closed, and the conduct of the investigation, and I'm satisfied that that uh, the investigative team uh, did that investigation properly and thoroughly. And you know, w one thing that's important to remember in these instances that the dual mission of the FBI is to protect the American people and uphold the Constitution. 
So in any investigation, there comes a time when, um, when we no longer are able to continue investigating subjects. So that at the end of that investigation, the case team determined that the subject did not pose a threat. This was eight years ago determined that he did not at that time pose a threat and the investigation was closed. When you talk about a foreign terrorist organization, which one exactly are you talking about? When you say inspired, what does that exactly mean? Does that yep. mean that he was part of it or you just watch videos? Okay. Can you just kind of explain that? Certainly. And also, is that same organization linked to the previous case as well? What previous case? The, oh, the, the, the closed investigation. Okay, so so I'm not going to talk about the specific organization because I don't want to give any organization um, the opportunity to, to, to claim any credit for this. What, what, the, what, what inspired means is we have not found indication at this point in the investigation that Rashid was either directed by or in contact with foreign terrorist organization uh, actors. We believe at this point that he was inspired by, you know, rhetoric and or propaganda by foreign terrorist organizations. So, so it's, the, it's the lack, inspired, we define inspired as the lack of direction, but the inspiration for the attack. Could you speak more about the contents of the note found in Lewis's car? I can't, uh, the, the most specific thing I want to say right now is that we believe that he may have been inspired by foreign terrorist organizations. Do you like anything at all in the note, or what was the, I mean, it was the, what is that? The note indicates that he may have been inspired by a foreign terrorist organization. Why, why did he go from Garland to Plano? Um, they got to kind of go out of your way to get there. And what brought him from a Lyft driver all the way to Plano Police Headquarters? That's all part of the active, ongoing investigation that we're working in. Those are questions we're really working to answer. The investigation 2010 to 2013, can you just kind of tell us, I mean, did you try to determine that he was a terroristic threat, or was it, he just not trying to see if he put on a watch list? Explain that just in, in normal terms about what you guys did to, in 2010 to 2013 with the, with the suspect. So, so well, I'm not going to talk specifically about that investigation because it would disclose how we, you know, Things that are relatively sensitive, and and it's and some of it is it is is not unclassified. Um, bottom line on the investigation is, uh, you know, we we opened an investigation to determine if he was uh, a threat, uh, if he was involved in activity supporting terrorist organizations or a threat to the public. Uh, we worked that investigation over the course of three years, conducted many investigative steps, and at the end, at the time in 2013, eight years ago, uh, determined that, that he was not a threat. That's, that's pretty much all. That's as specific as I can get. Have y'all so, been able to search his house? Where did he live exactly? Um, did y'all search his house? And uh, did y'all find any other weapons in his vehicle or on his person um, after the shooting at Lake so with, those are all part of the ongoing investigation that I don't think we want to discuss the specific so, steps. So why Plano police? Do you have an asterisk on the note that says Plano police? Uh, Rashid did not live in Plano. He was not a Plano resident currently at, at, at any rate. Uh, we've looked through all of our databases and systems, and we can't find where we have any records of contact with him. That doesn't mean that he couldn't have been a passenger in a car or maybe he wasn't cited or something. but. Uh, we don't have any incident reports, no citations, no warnings of any kind of records like that whatsoever on the sheet. So we have no idea why he came to Plano to uh, confront police officers. How long will the um, lobby for Plano Police Department be closed? Uh, it, will, it will be closed tomorrow, and uh, we, sh we intend to open it up by Wednesday. Can you spell the suspect's name, by the way? I'm going to give you a sheet that okay. has everybody's names. So should the public be worried that this is maybe some new tactic being used by terrorist organizations here. Do we need to be concerned, or is this a one-shot incident? Or are you guys investigating something that can tell the public otherwise? Sure. So, so at this point, I'll reiterate uh, what I said before. At this point, there's no indication that he was working directly with others or that he was in contact with others uh, who may be planning similar activity. Now, we're early in the investigation, and that's an investigative priority for us to determine. Uh, as far as the uh, as far as the the um, the mode of attack, uh, you know, we ask the public again to be vigilant. In, in this instance, uh, you know, Rashid uh, was surrounded by some people at least, right, who who may have who, who may have had information at some point. And generally, what we're seeing in these types of attacks is there is always at least one person, or maybe more people, who could potentially alert law enforcement uh, to to pending violent action. So we just ask the public to please uh, notify us early 
notify local police, notify the FBI if you believe that someone is a threat to the community. Any clue why he targets her? Uh, we don't. We think he just called a lift, and she's who showed up. Uh, we don't have any indication that he targeted her, or uh, that he targeted anyone in Garland specifically. We think he ordered a lift, and, and she's the person that showed up. Do you know if she targeted her? So, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we have time for just one more question. Okay. Was the shooter ever interviewed by the FBI in the previous case investigation from 2010 to 2013? Again, you know, we, we conducted all logical investigative steps over a three-year period, and that's about as specific as I can be about that investigation. Can you clarify what Thank, thank you all very much. Um, I will provide, I have a uh, sheet here. It's got the proper spelling of names and uh, proper spelling of everybody who was involved here. Uh, I will send out a, an email with the photos that I'm also providing you of the, uh, the victim and the suspect. And then I will uh, send out another press release and pretty much a synopsis of what you heard up here. So nothing new will be in that press release that I will send out here shortly. Uh, if need be, we will organize another press release in the, uh, in the future or a news conference. So um, we'll be in touch. I'll be your main point of contact for anything in Garland. Um, and I can help direct you if you have questions that come to me to where that needs to go. Can you okay. clarify, was, was he actually picked up by the victim? Was it, where were they at okay. in the ride? Okay, guys, so we, we, we've, we've, we've kind of discussed all that, so we, we need to, that, yeah, yes. yeah. Was he being dropped she, off, picked up? Yeah, she, um, yes, Thank you. she picked him up. Um, she was shot in her own car, and, and then he, um, he pulled her out of the car and left in her car, and we've got that on video. And we don't know how long it took him to get to the Plano Police Department, but we know he then drove to the Plano Police Department and that's, that's what Any, You're saying that there's video inside the car? No, there's video uh, outside of the car. Uh, there's no criminal record for us. We have no uh, history with Rashid. Uh, I think we had an accident that he was involved in like 10 years ago, but other than that, no history. You said he was a resident of Garland, so where did he live? I'm sorry? You said he wasn't a resident of Garland. Like no, Rashid was a resident of Garland. He was a resident of Garland? Yes, he was a resident of Garland. Was the right, little victim a resident of Garland? Thank you all very oh, yes. much, gentlemen. Okay. Appreciate you. Um, and, and again, I'll be your point of contact with Garland. Uh, let's get a flyer here.